A drunken sailing accident once led to the death of England's heir apparent, plunging the country into 15 years of terrible civil war. And that's just one example of the death of a child of a British monarch growing plans of chaos. William the Conqueror was a French duke who famously invaded England in 1066 and defeated King Harold at the Battle of Hastings, taking the crown for himself. Only a few years after William invaded, his second-born son Richard died. While it's not completely clear what killed him, some accounts suggest he was riding in the woods while hunting and hit his head against a branch. The exact date of his death is unknown, but records show he was alive in 1069, so the tragedy is usually dated to around 1070, although it could have been as late as 1075. Richard is thought to have been born around 1055, so he would have been a teenager when he went to the woods to hunt on that fateful day. Like his brother Richard, in the year 1100, King William II also died in a hunting accident. Because he had no children, the crown of England went to his younger brother Henry, who became Henry I. Unlike William II, Henry had lots of children, although only two or three of them were legitimate, and a single disaster would take three of his children out of the world forever, eventually leading to a civil war in England. According to the chronicler Ordicus Vitalis in the Ecclesiastical History of England and Normandy, which was written at roughly the same time as the event, Henry's heir William Aidlin, his brother Richard, and sister Matilda Fitzroy were crossing the English Channel in the White Ship in 1120 when it sank. Vitalis claims that the crew of the vessel was drunk, and they made several mistakes while sailing, which eventually led to the boat crashing into a rock. He says 300 people were on board, and all but one of them died, including William Aidlin, Richard, and Matilda Fitzroy. Charles Spencer told Good Morning America, in fact, the crew were drunk. We know that. And um, so they, they were just going too fast, you know, and they hit the rock and that was that. This left Henry with only one surviving legitimate child, his daughter Matilda, also known as the Holy Roman Empress Maud. When Henry died, Matilda was challenged for the throne by her cousin Stephen, plunging England into civil war and anarchy. In the battle for the English crown, Stephen came out on top, but he eventually made Matilda's son Henry his heir. In 1154, he came to the throne as Henry II, who would live to see three of his children buried. Henry II's heir was called Henry the Young King because he'd been crowned a sort of co-ruler in 1170. But rather than appreciate this, Henry the Young King raised a rebellion against his dad only a few years later. The rebellion failed, as did the one Henry the Young King waged against his younger brother Richard the Lionheart. It was during this conflict that he died of dysentery. The young king was joined in both his rebellions by his brother Geoffrey, who would also die before their father in the year 1186, although sources disagree on if he died in a jousting tournament or due to a medical issue. Henry II ultimately died in July 1189 while warring against his son Richard. He died almost at the same time as his daughter Matilda, who passed away in June or July of that year. Richard III was immortalized as a bad guy by several famous writers of Tudor times, most famously William Shakespeare, but it's generally accepted now that this was unfair propaganda by people looking to pump up the man who dethroned him, Henry VII. A horse! A horse! My kingdom for a horse! While it's true that Richard only became king after several relatives with better claims to the throne died or disappeared, that doesn't mean he was necessarily responsible for those events. It did mean that his rule was shakier than he'd like, though, so he put a lot of emphasis on his only child, Edward of Middleham. Edward was born somewhere between 1473 and 1477, and he became Prince of Wales when Richard III ascended the throne in 1483. However, all the political maneuvering in the world couldn't save the boy from illness. Richard hadn't even been on the throne for a year when Edward came down with an illness and died in April of 1484. Henry VII defeated Richard III at the Battle of Botsworth Field in 1458, thus beginning probably the most famous dynasty in English royal history, the Tudors. Henry VII was the father of the infamous Henry VIII, but the younger Henry was never supposed to be king. Henry VII's eldest son, Arthur, was born a year after his father won the throne. Henry VII betrothed Arthur to the Spanish princess Catherine of Aragon, and the two were wed when Arthur was just 15. Unfortunately, though, Arthur died just five months after the wedding. Catherine stayed in England in a kind of limbo after she became a young widow, eventually marrying Arthur's brother after he became King Henry VIII. Henry VIII is famous for the number of wives he went through, at least partially in order to get some male heirs. Fat, gluttonous, sex-crazed, the king who married six wives and chopped off two of their heads. In the end, he ended up with three healthy children, all of whom would sit on the throne after he died, Mary I, Edward VI, and Elizabeth I. Before that, though, he mourned the loss of several other children. His first wife, Catherine of Aragon, had many pregnancies over the years. However, almost all of them resulted in miscarriages and stillbirths, with only Mary living to adulthood. Catherine's longest living child besides Mary was Henry, Duke of Cornwall, who died just a few weeks after he was born in 1511. 
Queen Anne was pregnant 17 times, once with twins, but she outlived every single one of her children. In fact, they all died before she even became queen in 1702. Anne married Prince George of Denmark in 1683. Many of her pregnancies ended in miscarriages or stillbirths, but several children were born alive. These included Princesses Mary and Anne Sophia, who both died of smallpox within the same week in 1687. Another Mary was born in 1690, but only lived a couple of hours. The same was true of a son, George, born in 1692. The only child to live more than two years was William, Duke of Gloucester. Born in 1689, he looked likely to become king one day since the then co-regents of England, William III and Mary II, had no children of their own. But Anne would not even be on the throne herself before William died, aged just 11 in 1700. The modern medical consensus is that he died of pneumonia. George II and his wife, Queen Caroline, had eight children, but several of them would die before the father. The youngest, Louise, married the future King of Denmark and was very popular in her new country, but died from pregnancy complications in 1751. Another daughter, Princess Caroline, never married, dying three years before her father in 1757. A third daughter, Princess Anne, died in 1759, the year before the king. However, the situation with his sons was even worse. In 1717, the then Prince George fathered a boy, but the new baby George only lived for a few months before dying in early 1718. Dynastically, though, the biggest blow to George II was the loss of his heir, Frederick, Prince of Wales, who died in 1751 at the age of 44. Personally, though, it was not such a painful event because the two hated each other with passion. Frederick's son, George III, became king in 1760 at just 22, inheriting the crown from his grandfather, George II. In a long line of arranged marriages that ranged from indifference to disasters, it is notable that George III and his wife, Queen Charlotte, were madly in love. This was reflected in many ways, the most obvious being the 15 children she gave birth to. Sadly, due in part to his long life, a number of George III's children died before him. The princes Alfred and Octavius were still just toddlers when they both died after being inoculated against smallpox, which was at the time a dangerous treatment but worth the risk to avoid catching the disease. Alfred was not yet two when he died in 1782, and Octavius was four when he died the following year. Princess Amelia, George's youngest and favorite child, was unwell most of her life, suffering from tuberculosis. She finally died from her illness in 1810 at the age of 27, and her death completely destroyed her already broken father. Suffering from severe mental health issues, he withdrew from public affairs for the rest of his life, though just how mad he was remains a matter of debate. I, I've read the doctor's reports and the king's correspondence in the royal archives, and I concluded that yes, he was ill, but he was not insane. Prince Edward, the father of the future Queen Victoria, only predeceased George by six days, dying of pneumonia on January 23, 1820. By then, however, George had not been in his right mind for a very long time and would not have known. George IV grew up with the perfect example of how to make an arranged marriage work, as his parents George III and Queen Charlotte genuinely loved each other. But George IV wasn't so lucky, as he and his spouse Caroline of Brunswick grew to hate each other. This meant that they only managed to have one child together before they separated, and everyone accepted that Princess Charlotte would be queen one day. But tragically, after marrying the Belgian Prince Leopold, Charlotte died giving birth to a stillborn child in 1817 following a truly agonizing two-day delivery. This meant that there was no clear line of succession until George IV's brother Prince Edward finally managed to father the future Queen Victoria in 1819, shortly before he died. Prince Edward's daughter, Queen Victoria, came to the throne in 1837 and stayed there until 1901. She and her husband, Prince Albert, had nine children, all of whom lived to adulthood. However, being quite long-lived herself meant that the Queen still buried several of her children. Princess Alice was the third child of Queen Victoria. After her marriage, she became the Grand Duchess of Hesse. She had seven children of her own, but sadly, one of them died during a diphtheria outbreak that affected almost every member of her family. While comforting another one of her ill children, Alice caught the disease herself. She died at age 35 on December 14, 1878, which was 17 years to the day after Victoria lost her husband, Albert. Queen Victoria's son, Prince Leopold, also died young, though it was also a miracle he lived as long as he did since he was born with hemophilia and suffered from epilepsy. However, he managed to attend Oxford, get married, and have his own children before he died in 1884. Sadly, while in France, he tripped and injured himself badly enough that his hemophilia made it impossible to recover. He was 30. Finally, Prince Alfred, who'd entered the Navy when he was 14, died less than a year before his mother in 1900, making it to the age of 55. He died from throat cancer. Edward VII became king after his mother, Queen Victoria, died in 1901. 
By then, he was a relatively old man himself, less than a year from his 60th birthday, and by that time, he had already buried two of his six children. One of them, the last child of Edward and his wife Alexandra, was named Alexander after his mother, but tragically, the baby died the day after it was born in 1871. The couple's first child and the heir to the throne was Prince Albert Victor, named after both his paternal grandparents. He was in his late 20s by the time he had time to settle down, having spent the previous decade attending Cambridge, enlisting in the army, and taking a seven-month tour of India, among other things. The woman who finally agreed to marry him was Princess Mary of Teck, and a date was blocked off in their calendar for their wedding when Albert Victor became unwell. There was a particularly bad flu pandemic at the time, and Albert Victor's case led to pneumonia, which killed him. He was 28 and died only six weeks before he was supposed to get married. Ultimately, it was decided that Princess Mary should instead get hitched to the next brother, Prince George, the Duke of York, who was now in direct line to the throne. Eighteen months after her first fiancé's death, Mary married his brother, who would go on to become King George V. 